Good morning. Warm welcome to all of you today. Glad to see you in worship this morning. Please take a minute during church today. You'll find the um, welcome pads in the pews at some place. And if you have a prayer concern or if you'd like to write an update to your membership information, you can do that on that slip of paper and we'll remember those people in our prayers throughout the week. We'd also like to extend a special congratulations and blessings to Miss Renee as she begins her ordained ministry at Trinity Lutheran uh, in Spencer, Iowa, just tomorrow, in fact. So <clears throat> out of the frying pan, into the fire, as they say. And uh, so God's blessings to you, Renee, and best wishes and, and uh, just all of the best as you go forth into your new ministry. We do hope that you'll remain after church to say goodbye and farewell uh, to Miss Renee. We'll be meeting downstairs in the fellowship hall for time of coffee and refreshments. And so God's blessings to you and uh, to all your family. So, With that, uh, please do notice the people who are in our prayers this week. We are especially pleased to receive Carter James Heisel, who's going to be baptized at the late service today. And so we are glad for that and wish all of God's blessings upon his parents, Ryan and Rebecca, and their family. Please stand now for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We read in 1 John, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for Jesus' sake forgives us all of our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, 533, Open Now the Gates of Beauty.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe, a ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer wayfare who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house. For you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please join in the responsive prayer of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right within me. 
Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking of the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the, God, the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they th themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is in him that God the Father has sent his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What signs are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? 
What works are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. We'll have children come forward for the children's talk if there's any. No? None this morning? It's too early? <laughs> All right, well, we'll go right into the sermon. I have a little thing to show you today, so bear with me here. <clears throat> See if this thing stands. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who is our bread of life. Amen. So today the gospel text is on the bread Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He makes it super simple. I love that. I love the metaphor. If you've been part of uh, Chris and I's Bible studies on Sundays or Tuesdays, you heard about how in, throughout the Bible there's the use of metaphors, and this is, is, this is one of them. But I think it's really interesting that Christ used this metaphor, the bread of life of life. I am the bread of life. You know, growing up, I don't know about you, but bread was a part of every meal. Breakfast, dinner, supper, it, it didn't matter. We had bread. That was always an option. Even when we went to school, there always was bread and butter. If you didn't like the cafeteria food, you could always have a bread and butter sandwich. Even when I was sick, the first thing that was offered to me as a child was toast. Do you want some toast? Did you have toast? Yes. Toast would make you feel better. So I find it ironic that Christ says, I am the bread of life. Christ is talking about how he is the staple. He is the sustainer. He is the one that nourishes. And as, as you watch or you read throughout scripture bread is used all the time right away off the bat with moses when they're wandering in the wilderness there's bread manna is provided by god or or even the widow which we just heard about you know she's going to make her last meal before she she's she and her son are going to die or she thinks they're going to die or christ saying this is my body you know given for you i mean he's talking about you know, breaking bread on his last night before he was betrayed. So bread is everywhere throughout the Bible. And, and Christ is trying to use bread to illustrate something in each one of these things. And so even in this scripture passage, so people are seeking out to try to find uh, this bread. Because you know that just moments ago they were fed... Um, the five loaves and two fish, and they, and, and they got their fill of bread, all the fish and bread that they could ever eat. So they are seeking Christ in this gospel text. They are going after him, but not because they want to worship him, because they want their fleshly needs met. They want to have another meal like that. And so when I first read the scripture, I go, oh man, you know, they're kind of you know, they're kind of selfish people. They're, they're going after Jesus for selfish reasons. They want their fleshly needs met. And so I have an illustration a little bit for you, and it's um, in, the, in the, the children's sermon today, we were going to talk about Fred, and Fred has a hole, and he's out, he was out searching for ways to find to fill this void in his life fred has a hole and this is the hole here 
Fred's hole, my hole, your hole. And in the gospel text today, the people were searching for Jesus to fill a need. And I believe that we do the same. We are always looking for ways to fill something. You know, maybe when you're first, you're always looking for something to fill up this hole. Maybe when you're young, it's, if I could just get out of my parents, away from my parents, and live by myself, have independence, that certainly will bring happiness. Just my own place. I don't care how small it is, just a place to be away and make my own decisions. That will certainly bring me fulfillment and happiness. But it doesn't, but as, as that happens, it, we, we find out, oh, I, I still have unmet needs. I'm still looking for things to bring me satisfaction. And that doesn't quite do it. So I think I will pursue, maybe, I, maybe a spouse. A spouse will do it for sure. If I just get myself a man, that'll do it. <clears throat> Spouses, did it do it? Or you have complete, full, 100% satisfaction and you jump for joy every day and they do everything in life for you? Probably not. I'd like to meet the person if that is the case. <laughs> so you search some more. You think, well, Maybe if I just have a really large bank account, I am, sh I am just sure that just a bunch of money in the bank is going to do it. That will do it. Or success. Or if I just get that, those letters on the end of my name, that wisdom where people will really know how much brains I have, that'll do it. And then you still find that this hole there still doesn't completely satisfy. So, well, maybe a bigger house. That'll do it, right? If I just have a bigger house, or maybe another one over here on the lake, that will bring me full sense of satisfaction. But what Christ is saying in the scripture text, in verse 27, if you look at that, he says, do not labor for food that perishes, but for food that lasts for eternal life. So this scripture is not just talking about food, not just talking about bread, filling our bellies. It's talking about all these things. And our sinful nature is, is that we continually search for something to make us feel whole. And what Christ is saying to us is, do not labor for these things, because they are not the things that will satisfy. Christ is the one that satisfies. So there's just all these things you know, bring a little happiness, but they don't completely fill that void. So what does Christ say? Christ says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever comes to me will never thirst. The only, truly, the only thing that can fill this hole, this void, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is it. This is just that simple. And so when Christ says, I am the bread of light, he is saying it's just that simple. You can search and search for all these other things to try to fill that void, but there is only one thing 
that will truly give satisfaction. And that is in our triune God. As you can see throughout Scripture, if you, if you start looking at this gospel text, you'll see where God is a giver. In, in verse 27, God says, Son of God will give you, or in 29, it's the work of God, or in verse 31, I'm the bread uh, from heaven, or in verse 32, my Father who gives. This whole gospel text is about giving. I am giving something to you. And it's really kind of funny because the disciples are like, even though all this giving is said in here, the disciples are like, what must I do? Because that's what we do in, in the world is we must do something. And so they're asking, they're asking Christ, what must I do? I must have to do something. And then this is what is so beautiful about uh, verse 29. Jesus says, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. I love that beginning. It's so beautiful that he says, this is the work of God that you believe. This is God doing unto you, not you doing unto God. And it just shows where God is showing true sustaining True nourishment comes from Jesus Christ alone and nothing that we do. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't do because we are thankful and because God is su such a giver and we are so thankful to that, we give. And that's what I witnessed here at St. John's over the past two years. Just St. John's is a giving church. And I am so grateful to have been a part of a congregation who is so loving and giving. I'm so thankful for the handshakes and the hugs and the warm welcomes and just the grace. And then, you know, thinking back on this last weekend of just what a wonderful example of giving. Pies and bars. I've never seen more pies and bars in one place in my life. I mean, it was just amazing, the, just the energy that was put in to support something that, that is Christ-centered, is loving your neighbor. And, and that is what I've truly enjoyed and been able to witness here at, at St. John's, and I'm just so grateful for. I know there's a lot that's going on in, in the church here, and a lot that uh, you have to decide in, you know, a month or so with the vote and all that's happening. And I hope that you will take the time to go to these classes. Chris has put a lot of time and energy into teaching you, and we want you to understand and know um, what, what you're voting for. And so I hope that you will, um, number one, go learn about these things, and number two, stand in, in the word of God. Stand in Christ alone. Stand for the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Amen.
Brenda, before we say the Apostles' Creed, you have a hard job ahead of you because I made a mistake earlier in the service. Are you able to go back to the first slide that shows the uh, thank you presentation from Miss Alicia? Hi, St. John's. My name is Alicia Jelkin, and I was the one that was heading the RAGBRAI fundraiser that we just completed last weekend. And I ultimately wanted to thank every single person that has contributed by praying if you gave me food, if you donated money, if you donated time. Um, I don't know how to individually thank every single person um, other than saying, um, I'm really proud to be a member here at St. John's and you should too. Um, this is a wonderful church, wonderful people. I've met so many people that I now consider very close friends or church family. I. Um, it's been a wonderful experience for my kids to see service, uh, how we, we do service hours and how we're working towards a goal. So it's been a wonderful experience for my whole family as well. So here are some photos um, of Jeff and I cooking meat. Uh, we have the process of going to get all the vegetables um, that we had to cut up and all of the chips, the bags of chips that I had to go get. and. Um, the amount of dessert. It's just, what an amazing sight to see. It was just crazy. And the amount of help I had. And just, um, I would, I'm just so proud of everything that we've accomplished. Um, I just, I wish I could shout out thousands of names. It feels like, it feels like thousands of people helped me. Uh, so I just wanna tell you from the bottom of my heart that I am so proud that, um, I belong to your church family and thank you so much for anything that you contributed and I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting St. John's and our youth. And thank you and what a wonderful time together. Give yourselves a hand and thank you so much to Alicia Jelk and let's give her a big round of applause too. What a wonderful occasion. We hope that RAGBRAI comes, uh, well not next year, but maybe in another 10 or 15 years time. At this time, please rise as together we confess our Christian faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer for God's people in this place and for all the world over in their time of need. O Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise that you have filled us with the bread of life, the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is by his body that we are strengthened. It is by his blood that our thirst is quenched. Indeed, O Lord, your Son is the bread from heaven and the living water that springs up to life eternal. O Lord, fill us always with these good things so that our hearts may rest in you alone. Lord, in your mercy, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would fill with every blessing, strength, and comfort, hope, and encouragement those nearest to us in our hearts and those closest to us upon our lips. Today, we pray especially for Glenn, Joni, Amy, Dieter, and Todd. We think of Judy, Adam, Ron, Naoma, and Stu. Pour out your Spirit, Lord, upon Leanne, Sharon, Diane, Gladys, and Todd. Watch over Keith and Christy, Janet, Audrey, Lily, and Cade. 
Stay close to the side, O Lord, of Dylan and Moni, Tyra and Mark, and bless all of those whom we name now in our heart of hearts. O Lord, these are your children. Remember them in every season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for our sister Renee, and ask all of your blessings upon her ministry. O Lord, you have ordained her to be a pastor in your church by your Holy Spirit. Continue to strengthen her. Continue to pour out your Spirit upon her for wisdom and understanding that she may speak clearly for your Son, Jesus Christ, so that hearing, all may have faith. Bless her and her family, O Lord. Watch over her husband, Brian, her children, and their family together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Watch over, O Lord, all of those who attend the fair. We give you thanks and praise for this time together in our community. We ask especially that you bless all those who work the land, who labor in agriculture, whether animal or plant. O Lord, let the fields rejoice with an abundance of harvest and bless all the world by your provident hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Watch over our nation, O Lord. Give us a sense of peace, togetherness, and unity. O Lord, let all pursue the common good, that they may be quick to hear, slow to speak, and eager to act together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, then, O Lord our God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the sign of Christ's peace with one another. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread 
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering our Lord, together let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the table is set, and all is prepared, and our Lord says, come and dine. Please be seated, coming forward at the direction of your usher.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our sending hymn this morning, number 618, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.